Yes, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to talk about how to create this sort of spacey girl effect here in Photoshop. We're going to use a stock photo. Um, in fact, I have a link to this Starry Night stock photo in the description of this video so you can go download that. This was a purchased stock photo, so I can't really share that one. Um, but you can check out the star one. You can really do this with any photo you want. You just want it to be, you know, the, the better the quality of the photo, great, and the better lighting you have in the photo, um, great as well. Now, before we jump into the tutorial, I want to let you guys know I'm selling two tutorial bundles. I've taken the best of the best of my tutorials, bundled them into like an advanced Photoshop features bundle and also a how to retouch images Photoshop bundle. I got annotations on the video right now. You can go over to my website, check them out. Uh, it would be great if you go check them out and even better if you'd buy one. Uh, it just supports the site. You know, I'm cranking out all the content every day I'm not gonna stop doing it but hey support for the site is good so let's get back to talking about this tutorial now I, I ran into this effect and I started messing around with it because I was exploring uh, the image adjustments as I so often do and I bumped into po uh, posterize and threshold um, and I I'm gonna be honest with you I virtually never use posterize um, it, it just is it's to me it's not something that's very useful um, threshold on the other hand I, I have used occasionally I've used it with some color correcting applications um, and things like that and I was messing around with it and I think we can do some cool stuff so let's begin I don't really like to use the adjustments up here I prefer adjustment layer so layer new adjustment layer and threshold and uh, yeah whatever I'll give it any old name and we can see it, it gives her this very I don't know almost Audrey Hepburn ish look it's this very like artsy postery kind of look um, the thresholds a little bit too high in fact if I keep dragging to the right you can see it's just gonna kind of fill in and fill in and fill in I want to back it down a little bit maybe to like yeah, 97, 98, 98 looks good for, for where I am. Maybe I can tick it up a couple more. Yeah, something like 100. That looks pretty good for here. It's just going to depend on your image. I'm just looking so you can still make out that it's a face, but I still have big bodies of blackness um, that I can apply color and, and some of the design aspects that we're going to be applying um, in just a moment. One of the other things actually we can do to bring some of this stuff out, if we shut off the threshold adjustment layer, select our original background layer and add a levels adjustment layer. So that's that levels adjustment layer icon. We can always go layer, new adjustment layer levels as well. And we'll just like boost the contrast a little bit um, by bringing up the darks, kind of something like that. Maybe even bring up the lights a little bit as well. And uh, we can see there's before with no levels adjustment layer. And when we add the levels adjustment layer, it just kind of thickens everything up up here, gives us a little bit more. So that's kind of cool. We'll roll with that. And now that we have our two adjustment layers and our background image, I'm going to select the threshold adjustment layer here and we're going to merge all of our layers to a new layer. So we have everything kind of set up non-destructively and we're going to sort of start destroying things here. We're going to hold down command shift option on the PC that would be control shift alt and the letter E and that's going to merge all visible layers up to a new layer. Great. We can just select all of these layers. I just clicked on the top one, hold down shift, click on the bottom one, hit command or control G to group them up and I'm just going to rename that BG for just background. It's just the background assets if you will. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go to that stars uh, JPEG image and we're going to desaturate it. You can desaturate it however you like. I prefer to go image adjustments desaturate. This is not to make it a black and white image uh, to look at. It's just because of the blend mode that we're going to be using in a moment. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to drag it up here into my image. You can see it's very tiny and that's because my image in the background is quite large. Um, I'm going to close my stars JPEG image and what I'm going to do here with with the stars JPEG is go edit free transform there it is and I'm just gonna hold down my shift key and I'm gonna make it quite a bit larger so something maybe kind of like that um, I'm also gonna right click and rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise I kind of want oh I'm sorry I'm gonna rotate 180 degrees from here I kind of want the brightest area of my stars to be all the way down in this corner I wasn't thinking there when I when I did that in fact I'm gonna just pull this out this way a little bit and I'll set my image right in here just like that hit the check icon to commit the changes now here's where the magic kind of happens I'm gonna set the blend mode to screen and you can see essentially it masks everything to uh, this black body of artwork. Now what exactly it's doing technically, I'm not going to get into that right now, but it's just, just showing us the stars basically is what's happening. Now one of the other things I want to do is add a little bit of depth to this. So I'm going to do that by creating a new layer and I'm going to make sure my foreground and background colors are black and white and I'm going to go filter render clouds and it's just going to fill this blank layer with kind of these clouds and that's not black, that's actually a very dark purple. You see that? Dark blue, dark purple. Uh, we're going to make sure it's black. Alright, and we're going to go try that again. Filter clouds 
And there we go, straight black and white. That's important because, again, here we're going to, well, actually, before we change the blend mode, let's go image adjustments levels and boost the blacks. It's going to sort of isolate some of our clouds a little bit more. Maybe something kind of like that. That looks cool. Hit OK. Uh, because what we're going to do here is go filter blur, motion blur, and I'm going to apply a very, very fast or very wide distance wise um, motion blur to make these little blobs of white almost appear like little streaks. Maybe I'll even boost the distance more. How far can we take it? 2000 pixels. Yeah, let's go to 2000 pixels. That looks pretty cool. Hit OK. And I think we need to apply the levels one more time. I'm going to image adjustments levels. I just want to boost the black levels up a little bit more. Whoop, not so far that we don't see any of the white bits. And we're going to drag the white slider over to really make some of the white bits uh, a bit more visible. There we go, something like that. I don't want it to be solid white. I want it to be like just past medium gray, if that makes sense. Hit OK. And now we're also going to set this to the blend mode of screen. So when we do that, now we sort of have these streaks that we've added to our outer space, if you will. So that's pretty cool. We can always duplicate this layer if we want to intensify them. I don't want to do it that way, though. We're going to intensify them a slightly different way. Before we get to that, though, uh, we're going to go ahead and apply some color here. So go ahead and create a new layer. And up here under swatches, I have sort of colors that I've set aside that are sort of like space when it's mixed with a really cool late sunset. Um, so starting with like this peachy swatch all the way to this pink, these are all colors that I'm going to incorporate. So I'm going to, I'm going to work probably on a bunch of different layers here, but I'm going to almost try to isolate each color on its own layer. But let's grab the brush tool and just start to kind of play with these colors and have fun. So I'm going to start with this peachy color and uh, down here I'm going to paint. Uh, with the peachy brush, maybe something there. I'm going to leave these bits black, by the way. Those are going to just stay uh, nice and black. We're going to go filter here, and we're going to go blur, and I'm going to choose Gaussian blur, and something like, we probably don't need quite 250. We'll go with maybe 150. Hit OK. Um, and then if we change the blend mode to something like soft light or overlay, we're going to see that it's really just going to attack the, the grays and the blacks and whites that we have in that underlying layer. Now this isn't quite as saturated as I want it to be, so I'm going to use the uh, hotkey Command or Control U to bring up my hue saturation adjustment, and I'm going to boost the saturation a bit. Maybe I'll darken it just a little bit, see what that does, Maybe a little bit too dark. There we go, something right about there, that's pretty cool. We're getting some heat from almost like a setting sun, if you will, it'll make more sense in a second. We're going to create another new layer here. And I'm going to choose the next color in line, and I'm going to paint some of this in, I'm going to paint some of it into our eyes. Uh, just above the eyes actually, which means probably we should hit the bottom of the eyes with that same peachy color. We'll do that in a second. Uh, let's go ahead and blur this again. I just like to apply this Gaussian blur. It just tends to like f help fade the colors together a little bit more, help them interact with this background gray that we've set up a little bit more naturally. And again, we'll try soft light here, maybe overlay, see what, see what we like. I actually kind of like overlays. It shows a little bit more color. Let's go back down to this peachy color and uh, let's just paint in the bottom of the eyes a little bit. There we go, that's cool. Maybe even into the nose, top of the lips. Cool. All right, let's create another uh, new layer and we'll go with this uh, purplish color. And I'm gonna paint with this right through here. All right, I don't care if it hits our eyebrows, that's fine. We're gonna go filter, apply that same Gaussian blur. Great, let's see what uh, soft light will do for us here. That's actually pretty cool. You're gonna see, we're gonna intensify the colors here uh, quite a bit in a moment. Actually, I'd like overlay even more. Uh, we're gonna roll with overlay. Again, create a new layer. And you can see, basically, I'm just going through now and painting my colors. Command or Control F to apply the last used filter, which in this case is that Gaussian blur. Great. And then a blend mode like soft light. Cool. We've got a nice dark streak going through our, uh, our space there. And now we'll go with one of these really dark colors. Whoops, I double-clicked it accidentally. We'll go with one of these dark colors, and we're going to paint the entire top portion with one of these, one of these really dark blue-purple colors. We're going to blur it, Command or Control F, and I'm going to set the blend mode to soft light. And now that we've laid down our base of color, we're going to go and we're going to intensify things. So I'm going to create a new layer here, and maybe I'll start with this kind of pinkish color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of paint along some of these streaks here, right? And actually what I can do is start here, hold down my Shift key, and paint across them like that. What I probably should do is shut off the shape dynamics so I don't have my pressure sensitivity for my tablet. Right, there we go. That's more like it. Cool. I can do it there. I can do it there. 
All right, so we can just get some of these colors coming through here. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to go filter blur, motion blur, and we're going to blur along that same negative 29 angle, all right? Distance of probably closer to 1,000 is probably going to be fine for us here. Hit OK. Um, and let's set this to a blend mode of overlay and see what that looks like. Mm, it's a little bit too dark. Try soft light. Still a little bit dark. So what we'll do is we'll do that command U again. Bring that up. We'll increase the brightness. Because what I really want to do is bring out kind of those those streaky bits. Increase the saturation. Maybe we'll try that. It looks pretty good. All right, cool. Something like that. And it's going to add a good amount of depth up there. We can go ahead and create a new layer here. We can use one of these darker colors and almost paint in between those streaks, right? Because now if we blur this, it's going to sort of contrast the brighter pinks that we just painted with with like a, a, a color that's a little bit darker at least and what that's going to do is just make it appear like there's you know a greater distance between here and right here so that's cool I'm actually going to go filter blur and add a little bit of Gaussian blur to these as well not 150 pixels but maybe like I don't know around 40 50 something like that cool Let's set this to we'll try overlay first and that's far too dark so we'll go soft light um, and then again, Commander Control U. Let's brighten these up a little bit, increase the saturation, maybe a little bit. There we go, cool. All right, so now that we've done that, what I want to do is I want to specifically um, accent just the the really streaky bits. So here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a new layer, and you can either choose like a very light pink or something that you know something that's close to the color you have, or even just straight up go with white. And I'm going to make my brush quite a bit smaller here. Maybe about, yeah, 50, I don't know, 70, oh, not 5,000, I know that, Here, let me see, 80 looks pretty close, maybe like 100 or so, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and I'm going to paint right along there, cool, I'm going to paint right along there, cool, paint right along there, that's great, I need a smaller brush for there, probably smaller brushes for down here, so I'll right click, just make the size of my brush a little bit smaller, paint right along there, whoops, not quite straight, I'm do that, there we go, more like that right through there, right through there, right through there. Now with these, we can apply that Gaussian blur first um, to just kind of blur them a little bit. Eh, you know what, actually I don't want to blur them that way. Let's just do the motion blur now that I'm looking at it. Because the motion blur, you see how it's going to give them like this streakiness to the end of uh, of our, our, our lines. That's pretty cool. It's going to give us a neat effect. And then we can try setting these to overlay, see what that looks like. That's kind of cool. We can try soft light. Actually, I think I prefer overlay. And then what you would do is you would mask this layer. So we apply a mask and we grab our brush tool. We probably need a pretty big brush, maybe 300. Oop, maybe bigger than that, maybe 900. There we go. Nice soft edge brush. And maybe reduce the opacity of the brush a little bit, around 60%. And what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll, we'll darken areas that need to be darkened. Let me make sure my shape dynamics, yep, they got turned back on. Um, like this line right through here, maybe what we'll do is we'll make that one just a little bit darker, make this part of this one a little bit darker, maybe kind of fade it off a little bit more harshly, because it's starting to look just a little bit too uniform for my liking, right? So we just want to really mix things up. Down here, it's just way too bright. We can control all of that. Cool. All right, so you can see we can just add stuff like that. If you have brushes where you can specifically add a sparkle, hey, that's great as well. And one of the other things you can do is come in, add another layer, and do another round of these streaks. But what I would do is do very, very thin ones. So this, this image obviously is massive, as you can see. What I'm going to do is just apply like a white streak. Whoop. We've got to make sure our opacity is set to 100 there. Apply a very small streak to like that. Maybe apply a very small streak to the bottom, or yeah, probably the bottom, because remember the light is kind of coming from the bottom. Uh, and the same thing up here, we'll apply a very uh, small streak to the bottom of that. I'm just going to loop this with the lasso tool, and then I'm going to grab my move tool, and I can use my arrow keys just to nudge that over, so it kind of gets onto our little our little bit of pink there, and go select, deselect to, well, deselect it. And now what we're going to do with this is, again, go filter, blur, motion blur. We're going to bur blur it along that same axis, and you can see what it's going to do. It really just fades those edges nicely. Uh, so right around 1,000 looks great. Uh, and then this, again, you can do something like, oh, let's see what overlay looks like. Overlay will probably look great. Overlay actually maybe a little bit... Uh, not quite bright enough for us. So maybe what I'll do is just do something like color dodge and reduce the opacity a little bit. Ah, I really don't like that. Let's do, here is what we'll do. We'll do, we'll do overlay and then we'll hit command or control J to duplicate the layer. You can see it just really builds up that effect. Um, and they're both kind of off of where I want them to be. So with the lasso tool, I'm going to select them both. I'm making big selections because they're both pretty big effects now that we've blurred them. All right, there we go. I moved that one up. 
And then let's also grab this guy here. Move this one up a little bit. There we go. So just like that, we kind of adjust them a little bit. So as you can see, using uh, a bunch of different painting and blurring and some textures and the good old threshold, we take our image from just being this plain black to having sort of this space type um, vibe to it. I don't know. It's pretty cool. And it's something that you can take and you can really do to any type of image. And using the techniques, I mean, they're all techniques you can use wherever you want, really, to go ahead and just with some brushing and coloring, blend modes and blurring, uh, you can do a whole lot to really change the look and feel of a graphic or an image. So, for making the Space Girl and using all these different techniques in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsandTutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.